this is it. John Cena is going to hell now. There's no coming back from this. Like, that's it. He's going straight to hell. When he dies, that's where he's going. That's where he's going because of this. What's up, guys? It's time for another Raw review. WWE Monday Night Raw episode uh, for April 29th, 2013. And... What a roller coaster ride uh, this Raw was. There were points that were really, really good, and then there were other points that were fucking awful. And then there was the John Cena Make a Wish segment that I have a lot to say. So we're going to get to that pretty quickly. <clears throat> but let's start with the opening of the show here. Let's go. Uh, like this video, subscribe to my channel. Each one of those I get really helps me out, and I appreciate it. So. Show opens with uh, a triple threat match. Dumbest fucking triple threat match I've seen in a long time. You got Ricardo Rodriguez versus Zeb Coulter versus Big E Langston. And the winner of the match uh, gets to determine the stipulation for the triple threat World Heavyweight Championship match at uh, the upcoming pay-per-view Extreme Rules. And... Uh, I understand what they were going for here. Uh, it was supposed to be like a humorous match. Uh, and parts of it were kind of funny, but what a garbage fucking way to open your show. Like, if if you're not a fan of the product and you're changing channels and you see this gigantic three-hour show starting, so you want to tune in to see what's going on, and you see a fucking guy with leopard print uh, pants in Ricardo Rodriguez and Zeb Coulter, who's a fucking old man with this gigantic fucking handlebar mustache, um, you're going to turn the show off. I'd be like, what the fuck am I watching? Off. And even if you are a pro wrestling fan, you still might look at that and say, what the fuck am I watching? Off. So it was a stupid way to open the show. And... Uh, Ricardo Rodriguez won the match, even though Big E Langston was in there, so whatever. It was it was a joke match, uh, but it had, like, serious implications, uh, which were revealed later on. <clears throat> but it was a dumb way to open the show, in my opinion. <clears throat> All right, so next up is the much-talked-about John Cena Make-A-Wish segment. <clears throat> And, first of all, let me get started with, uh, I respect, let me say I respect the hell out of these kids, you know, what they've had to go through in life, what they're going to have to go through in life. Um, I respect these kids, these kids are soldiers, they're warriors, uh, they're stronger than I have ever been or will ever be, so... Those kids, uh, are they have my respect. I respect the Make-A-Wish Foundation. It's a it's great thing that they're doing. It's a great cause. Uh, what they do for those kids is fantastic. Uh, I can't say enough good things about them. Do I respect the WWE for what they did? No, absolutely not. Because the motivations behind what the WWE did were absolutely fucking terrible, horrendous, lowest of the low, because they used these kids to get John Cena over, to help get John Cena over. Because in the end, that's all this really was to the WWE, was a big fucking PR stunt to help put John Cena over. And that is terrible. That's fucking disgusting in my book. That's sick, man. It sickens me to think that they would do this. It was just a big stunt, just a big stunt. They, they paraded these kids out uh, in front of all these fans to help get John Cena over, to help get those cheers and transfer them over to John Cena. And I just fucking talked about this last week. I just talked about this last week, man. Like, Mick Foley couldn't get John Cena over. The crowd still fucking booed him. Uh, the Rock saluting him and sucking his dick at WrestleMania couldn't get John Cena over. They still booed him. Fucking, let's go back even further. Bret Hart couldn't get John Cena over. Jerry Lawler couldn't get John Cena over. Fucking Zack Ryder couldn't get John Cena over. So what do they do? 
they bring out the one thing that any decent human being couldn't boo, and that's these sick kids. They bring them out onto the fucking stage so that people will cheer and to, like try to transfer it over to John Cena, and that is fucking deplorable. That is just makes me fucking sick thinking about that. That's fucking despicable. That's just garbage. And and you know what? Uh, it it didn't make a difference because at the end of the show, when John Cena came out again, minus the sick kids, people were still chanting Cena sucks. So they still couldn't get John Cena over, even with this. I mean, like. <laughs> what what the hell are they going to try next, you know? This is this is the lowest of the low. How how much further down can you get? Are they going to bring out fucking like infant babies dressed up in John Cena attire next? Are they going to strut out with these 9-month-old, 10-month-olds? Are they going to bring out a pregnant woman, a fucking gurney? And uh, an ultrasound mas machine and, like, display the ultrasound up on the fucking Titan Tron and, and, and show a picture of the unborn child with uh, John Cena attire digitally superimposed on top of its body. Oh, oh, and speaking of that, man, could they put any more fucking John Cena merchandise on these kids when they brought them out? I'm surprised those kids could even walk out to the entranceway with all the fucking... John Cena merchandise they had on them. It, it was nothing... It was the biggest John Cena commercial I've ever seen in my life. Nothing but a gigantic PR stunt to to put John Cena over and to sell his fucking merchandise. I mean, they had like 10 pounds of John Cena gear on them. Man, the wristbands, the headbands, the fucking t-shirt, the probably fucking underwear and the fucking cologne that John Cena has. If you got in there and you could, you could smell them, fuck. What a bunch of trash. <clears throat> Again, nothing against uh, the kids, the parents, you know, the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Yeah, the kids didn't know any better. The parents didn't know any better the reasons why the WWE was doing this. And this was probably great for these kids. This, their kids are going to remember this for the rest of their lives, and that's awesome. But the motivations behind the WWE were fucking terrible. I mean, there are, uh, like, stars of other professional sports that do this kind of stuff all the time, like, take football, for example. Uh, you know, football players do Make-A-Wish stuff and charitable contributions all the time, but you don't see them, like, stopping a football game in the middle of the first quarter to parade out all the sick kids onto the field and have somebody like Peyton Manning or whatever stand there and say, hey, here's all the kids I helped today. Take a look, everybody like me. Come on, buy my merchandise. I'm, I'm Peyton Manning. Fuck, I'm John Cena. Buy my merchandise, you know? John Cena is not even the only uh, professional... He's not the only professional wrestler that does Make-A-Wish stuff or charitable contributions. Like, Mark Henry makes uh, contributions all the time. He does charity work all the time. And the WWE never, ever, ever talks about that. Not ever. The Miz does uh, Make-A-Wish stuff, and they don't mention that. Fucking Antonio Cesaro just had a huge Make-A-Wish thing just last week, and they never mentioned it on air, not once. But when John Cena's coming to town, holy shit, whip out your dicks and start jerking off. John Cena's making everybody's wishes come true. God damn. Fuck, man. That's... Is the... Despicable, deplorable. I was, it, uh, it blew my mind. And I, I can't, pr I can't prove anything. I don't have any proof, you know. But I just, you just have to take a step back and look at the evidence that's in front of you, uh, the the weeks and the months and the years that the WWE has been trying to use other guys to put John Cena over and it hasn't worked. And you gotta think about the shady fucking business practices and the, the behind the scenes political bullshit that this rotten company goes through and does all the time. You know, take all of that into consideration and you can't tell me that even the most die-hard John Cena fan 
that that at least the thought that the WWE was using this at, to put John Cena over didn't cross their minds. You know, you can't tell me that. Because that's, that's short as hell is what it looked like. <laughs> I, mean, I can't be the only one that thinks that. I just can't be. You know, because, and I'm not. I've, I've looked at the forums since Monday night, and there's a lot of other people out there saying the exact same thing. Big fucking PR stunt to put John Cena over, and it makes me sick. And you know what? This is it. John Cena's going to hell now. There's no coming back from this. Like, that's it. He's going straight to hell. When he dies, that's where he's going. That's where he's going because of this. So, it's just just made me sick to my stomach. Fucking despicable, deplorable. And I don't even want to talk about it anymore. So let's just fucking move on to the next segment. Oh, Jeez. Okay, so next up, we had a match, Randy Orton versus Cody Rhodes. And this was a really good match. And it just goes to show you... Um, that if you let Cody Rhodes actually showcase his skills in the ring instead of fucking burying him all the time, he is a great worker. And Randy Orton, Randy Orton's up and down. There's sometimes where he's the most boring motherfucker in the ring, and then there's other times where he is an excellent uh, uh, professional wrestler, an excellent in-ring skills. So I think it has a lot to do with who he's working with in the ring. But uh, him and Cody Rose last night, they put on a really good match. And uh, Cody Rhodes looked really strong in this match, and I was surprised. He countered the RKO into the crossroads. That was great. Uh, the finish to the match was great. Orton countered the disaster kick where Cody Rhodes, you know, jumps off the second rope and spins around right into the RKO. That was cool to see. Good finish to the match. Uh, but there is, I have two problems with this match. One is, uh, Cody Rhodes. Nothing that he did, but it's just, it's really hard to get behind Cody Rhodes and get invested in him and say, oh, things are going to look up for him now because he's involved with this garbage feud with tons of fucking shit. So, you know, I just know that, because he's been losing to tons of fucking shit for weeks now. And I just know that, you know, come next week, he's going to go back to fucking jobbing to tons of fucking shit. So it's hard to get behind Cody Rhodes. Like, does this match really mean anything for him? And the other thing that I had a problem with in this match was the commentary. At least at the beginning of this match, the commentary was fucking terrible. It was so garbage. It was Michael Cole and JBL and Jerry Lawler, all three of them, talking about references to the 60s and the 50s. And Michael Cole's like, oh, you're so out of date. You're so out of touch. For those of you just joining us, you know, we're back in the 1940s. Fucking, uh, why do they got to try to be so pop culture with their references and shit? God, and they weren't even, talk like, moves were happening in the ring and they weren't even fucking talking about the match. It was horseshit, man. The commentary was just garbage. Ugh. But the match was good, at least. So maybe watch the match on mute. Maybe you'll get more enjoyment out of it that way. Alright, next up was, uh... Was one of the Bellas versus one of the tons of fucking shit dancers. Um, and I don't really care what happened. Uh, the Bellas looked good, so, you know... Again, put the put the show on mute and and watch it uh, to see how hot the Bellas looked, and you know that's about it. Next up was a promo by the Shield, and uh, the promo was very good. I liked it. <clears throat> uh, Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose are really good on the mic. You know they have excellent mic skills. They're very captivating, especially Seth Rollins. You know when he talks. I want to listen to what he has to say because he can make it sound really cool. Uh, and still, the Shield is one of the best things in the WWE at this point. It's it's what you want to tune in to Raw to see nowadays. And um, then the three-man band came out again. You know, whatever. They got their asses kicked by the Shield, and then Kane and Daniel Bryan came out, and then they kicked... Uh, three-man bands asses. So, you just stop having them come out. 
<laughs> Why is Three Man Band even coming out? I don't get it. I just don't get it. Okay. <clears throat> so next up was... Uh, Oh, yeah. I figured out how to order a fucking pizza. Thanks, WWE. That's three hours of raw programming for you right there. It's fucking garbage, man. Awful. Just stupid shit. All right, so next up was a match. Uh, Dolph Ziggler versus Kofi Kingston. This is a champion versus championship. Or a champion versus champion match. And, hey, it was another good match. That's two good matches on Raw. That's not bad. Uh, I... This match had a lot of energy, um, and, oh, side note, Kofi just had a baby, so that's a big deal. I got two kids, so congrats to Kofi. Uh, yeah, there was a lot of energy, um, in this match. It was very fast-paced, uh, you know, these two guys have good chemistry in the ring together. They work well together, um, so you're always going to get a good match when these two face each other. But uh, Dolph still could not win this match clean. There was, again, a lot of interference to help Dolph Ziggler win. You know, you can't have your heel be a pussy constantly. Why can't he be a strong heel? He is one of the best wrestlers in the WWE, if not one of the best professional wrestlers in the business, the sport of professional wrestling at this point in time of this generation. Make him look as strong as he can be. Don't make him look like a fucking pussy. You know, it's that sucks, you know. Another thing I have written down here, uh, Kofi took a face plant right before the finish of the match. He did the springboard, and, I don't know, there was a miscommunication or something. Dolph Ziggler was out of the way, way ahead of time, and Kofi just, land, Kofi just landed right on his fucking face. So that was kind of funny. <laughs> And then after the match, uh, uh, Ziggler hit the zigzag, won the match. And then uh, Big E did his goofy-looking finisher to Kofi after the match twice. Because, I don't know, it didn't look goofy enough the first time, I guess. Oh, and then the King. Jerry Lawler says at that point, if Dolph Ziggler can't beat him, he's going to have them beaten. Which, again, in my opinion, it's, it's stuff like that that just continues to make Ziggler look weak to the audience at home when they hear these guys on commentary, you know, saying that he could barely beat uh, Kofi Kingston and he needed tons of fucking help to do it. All right. Next up was uh, the Brock Lesnar Triple H video package. And, uh, yeah, just like WrestleMania, just like their match at WrestleMania, I'm really not all that excited for it, so... But it's coming whether we want it or not, so, you know, whatever. Next up was uh, Jack Swagger versus Zack Ryder. And they actually let Zack Ryder talk on the mic, which they haven't done in months. But it was used just to call back to the match, the triple threat match at the start of the show, which was very strange. I didn't really understand that. Um, but at least you got on the mic, right? Uh, Zack Ryder's been doing what he can. He, he's teasing a heel turn, you know, stuff he's putting out on his Twitter and on his YouTube. Um, he's changing his look. So, if, well, in the end, it doesn't matter because WWE just fucking hates Zack Ryder. And they squash him again. So, Zack Ryder is doing the best that he can in, in the company. And the WWE is just shitting all over him. Oh, yeah, so next up is a tug-of-war challenge by Mark Henry. And as soon as I heard, as soon as I saw Mark Henry walking around with a fucking gigantic rope backstage, I immediately skipped the rest of the fucking segment, because I did not want to watch that. Um, so next up was Alberto Del Rio versus Antonio Cesaro. Man. I really like Antonio Cesaro, man. The guy is great in the wing, in the ring. He is a great performer, and I really like this match too. Another good match uh, on Raw. I'm I'm surprised, and I got a lot of notes about some cool things that happened in this match. Um, at one point, Cesaro bit Del Rio's hand to reverse a hold and and turn it into one of Cesaro's holds, and that was funny to see. That's some classic heel stuff. I like that. And then, uh, later on in the match, there was a really nice running Hurricane Rana by Del Rio. 
coming off the ropes. And he just, he, he jumped right up, got Cesaro over the shoulders and flipped it into a Hurricane Rana. And it just looked beautiful, man. It was very well executed. I really like that move. Um, and then there's, there's this uh, move that's a part of uh, Cesaro's uh, repertoire where he does a, a, like a gut wrench, just a deadlift gut wrench on the guy. Uh, and into a a slam, um, and that move looks cool. I mean, that's a that's a really great kind of old school move for him to have. And I just wanted to point that out. And then another later on in the match, and this was a long match. There was a really nice German suplex by Del Rio. I mean, Cesaro took that fucking thing like a champ. He landed, you know, right on the right on the back uh, below the neck there, but it looked really. It looked, it looked brutal, you know. I thought it was really well executed. Again, this was a good match by these two. Uh, the crowd wasn't as into it as I was, uh, but this was a good wrestling match. <clears throat> and Antonio Cesaro lost this match. Uh, he lost again, which I, I, he's, been, he's lost every match like the past month. And he wasn't on WrestleMania, WWE, I don't know. But at least he didn't look fucking terrible losing this match. And he lost to somebody important, not like R-Truth, like last week. So, uh, he looked really good in this match. He looked very strong. So that's a positive that uh, for Antonio Cesaro there. Then after the match, Del Rio announces that the Triple Threat World Heavyweight Championship match, he gets to choose a stipulation, and he picks a ladder match. And let me tell you something. That's going to be a good match. I think that has... you got all the potential in the world with Del Rio and Ziggler. And Swagger's definitely not as good as those two, but he can wrestle. You put them on a, in a ladder match, especially Del Rio and Ziggler, uh, you're going to get a good match, I think. It's going to be pretty cool. All right, so again, roller coaster. you got your highs, and then you're down to your fucking lows immediately. A Fandango Great Collie dance-off. And you know what? As soon as I heard the announcers say that, I skipped the fucking segment because that's not even worth my time. I'm not going to watch that shit. That's fucking stupid. So after that, then, is the main event. Um, and for the first time in, since WrestleMania, I think, the main event of the show is actually a wrestling match. You got The Shield versus Kane, Daniel Bryan, and John Cena. <clears throat> and a lot of people are talking about uh, John Cena's injury. Is it real is what people are questioning. And I'm just going to give you my opinion. Yes, I think the injury is legitimate. And the reason I say that is because uh, it was originally advertised as a two-on-three handicap match with Ryback and John Cena. But through a bunch of fucking stupid backstage segments all night long. It eventually turned into a three-on-three match uh, with the guys that came out. And the reason I think they did that is because John Cena is legitimately injured and uh, they could... He, he could uh, be in the main event. Like, he could wrestle in the main event but not have to do as much because there were three guys instead of two. So he could still be there, but not have to do as much. And you know John Cena, man, he's always got to fucking be there in that main event. So that's why I think the the injury is legitimate. Because he really didn't do a whole lot in this match. And uh, this match was pretty good, too. I mean, the Shield, all those guys could fucking wrestle. And Kane and Daniel Bryan, especially Daniel Bryan, you know, they're all good workers. So it was another good match, lots of energy. The wrestling in the match was pretty good. Like I said, John Cena was barely in the match, so you had some good wrestling. And then eventually, John Cena did get the tag into the match, and he did his five moves of doom, like, fucking immediately. Uh, and then he goes for the fireman's carry, and then his leg gives out, and then Roman Reigns gets a big-ass spear on him and uh, pins John Cena. Now... A lot of people are saying that John Cena finally got a legit pin. Somebody went over clean on John Cena. Hooray. You're wrong. I'm going to tell you why you're wrong. Because I can guarantee you that next week on Raw, 
Uh, John Cena is going to come out and say that if it wasn't for his injury, if it wasn't for his heel, he would have won that match. I guarantee you. If he doesn't say it, the announcers are going to say it all night long. And that's going to be the reason why. So he'll have that excuse. As always, you know, I think, now I will say this is the closest thing to a clean win that we've gotten from John Cena or over John Cena since uh, Rock versus John Cena at last year's WrestleMania. That's right, an entire fucking year without a clean win uh, or anything close to a clean win because I don't count this as a clean win. But yeah, I don't think we're going to get much closer than that. So, uh, anyway, after that, Ryback comes out at the very end. And at this point, he looks even more like Goldberg than ever before with his jacket and his hat. Um, and he's staring down John Cena from the ramp. So, overall, this Raw was really good. Um, I mean, you had three great matches and a pretty decent uh, main event. So to get that much quality out of one episode of Raw nowadays is pretty rare. I mean, those are few and far between. I can't even remember the last time a Raw was this good. So, yeah. Um, but, <laughs> but you know what? Even though all this good stuff happened on Raw, um, the one thing that I'm going to take away from this episode is this is the episode of Raw that John Cena punched his, or, you know, picked up his one-way ticket to go straight to hell. Absolutely. I'm going to remember this 10 years from now. I'm going to I'm going to be going up to people. I'm going to say, hey, you remember uh, that Raw when John Cena brought out those sick kids to help get him over? That's like, that's fucking despicable, man. That's terrible. And uh, yeah, John Cena is going to hell for that. <laughs> Just terrible. All right. So that's going to do it. Uh, thanks you guys for watching. Uh, again, like this video, subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate that, and I will see you guys next time.